Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The summary and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart is signing black and again asking you to hit that share button. Uh, thank you if you hit share or like or subscribe. But the share button, I really want to thank you for hitting, especially because the message is more important than the messenger and uh, sharing benefits us. I want to give a shout out to uh, those who I know have shared. Uh, I know BGS has hit the share button. The Reverend Brother Pastor Deacon Dr. Edward Anderson has shared. Um, Don Calypso has shared. Uh, I believe Obsidian has also shared, and I thank you. Definitely uh, Don Calypso. Um, my colleague uh, showed me some proof of that, actually. So this being said, you saw the title of the message. You know, the part that's our fault and how we can fix it. I'll get straight to it. The part that's our fault as men is that we made this too easy for women. That's the first thing. Now, why we did it, it's simple. We didn't know the games that women were playing. The old heads knew some of the games and they didn't tell the, the, the middle, uh, you know, the middle aged guys at that time uh, that are now the old niggas. And the middle aged guys grew into old niggas who knew some of these games and they didn't tell us. Now we the middle aged guys and we got the young bloods coming up. So how we can fix it is that we can tell these young bloods. We can say to these young bloods, look, our generation got lucky. We were able to learn some of these games at a slightly younger age. We didn't have to get as old as the old niggas now are. But when you weren't here and we were middle aged, yeah, when you were not here and we were your age and these old niggas were middle aged, guess what? You know what happened? They didn't tell us the truth about women's games. A lot of times they didn't know and the ones who didn't know didn't tell us. And if you said anything about it, they say, well, don't complain. Be a man. Get out there and chase the pussy. So we're here to tell you the chasing pussy is like pissing on an electric fence. Why is that the case? Well, electricity causes your muscles to contract and convulse. The bladder is a muscle. Well, it's kind of a muscle. You piss on an electric fence. Uh, the muscle that cuts off the bladder could contract, but the bladder may or may not contract. I'm not really sure. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you piss on an electric fence and it may even make you have to piss a little more. That's part of the problem. It becomes cyclical. You piss on it, it electrocute, it shocks you. And I don't, you don't want to know what the damage is, I don't know. It's not something I go looking up. But the point is that one mistake leads to another. And it's a bunch of mistakes. The women are not going to tell you what they want. That's the first thing. They're going to lie to you about what they want. Understand that your own mother's not going to tell you she might be silent if she's a good mother or she may lie about it. If she's a bad mother, your older sister, your aunt, your grandmother. They, will, they ain't going to tell you if they're good, then they're silent. But telling you what they want. No, we don't even know if women can. So how do we fix this? What do we tell these young bloods? First off, we don't blame young bloods for being too easy when they just didn't know. They didn't know. We didn't know. But secondly, you tell these young bloods, OK, these are the games I know about. And there are other men who know about other games about which I don't know. And you can learn from them, too. Thirdly, you tell these young bloods, you got to understand that even the women in the family ain't going to make women uh, any less of a mystery to you. Your mother's not going to help you understand women. Your sister's not going to help you. Your, your cousin is not going to help you. Your grandmother, your aunts are not going to help you understand them in most cases. There are exceptions, but the rule is they won't. The third thing you tell them is, if they tell you that I am lying and I'm making this stuff up and that no woman ever plays these games, then they're women who play these games. Yeah, you, you young blood, you related to me. Your mom, maybe she's my sister. Maybe your mom is my wife and you my son. Or your mom uh, is my aunt. Or uh, you see, or uh, your, uh, your grandmother is my mother. Whatever the case is, you have to let them make you have to make them understand that at the end of the day, they're going to have to learn about women from other men because the women ain't going to tell them the truth. They might say nothing or they'll lie, but they ain't going to tell them the truth. The first thing you got to make them realize. And the second thing you got to make them realize is if the women try to stop them from learning from you, then those women are, in fact, part of the problem. Because they're setting the young blood up to be taken advantage of by other women. 
The fourth thing you got to tell young blood is they're going to hear the other advice from other niggas. And what they need to do is they need to look at the lives that these older cats have lived and decide if that's what they want for themselves. Is this what they're looking for? Not only that, do they want to sit up here and and chase after uh, a gender that demands a lot and gives little in exchange? But then the kicker is this, the, the, the fifth thing to tell them. And this is the last thing, and this will really show them. Is the example and the example is, look, young blood. Women are going to ask a lot from you and they ain't going to offer you much in exchange. They're going to ask you to do more than they, they're willing to do to try to impress you. And this is how I'm going to show you what I mean, though, young blood. Now, now, mind you, young blood at the time of the conversation should be about the end of elementary school, about to go into middle school. That's a good time to let them know this. And then keep dropping it on them through middle school. You say to young blood, look, young blood, let's say you like a girl, right? Now, if she knows that you still have toys and that you've got comic books, is she going to like you anymore? He's probably going to shake his head. No. OK, because she's going to say that you are still a little boy. You're too young for her. Right. Yeah. He's gonna nod his head. And you say, if that's the case, what she's saying is that if you like girls, then you're too old to like this other stuff anymore. OK, that's fair. If you can also say to her, OK, you like boys, you like me. Why do you still have a teddy bear on your bed? Now, do you see? See, that movie Boomerang had that problem. And Minister Jap, I want to thank him for going through this movie and making commentary about that. Minister Jap did me a huge favor when he did it. I was already red pill manners for all that. But he helped me to articulate this better. Minister Jap, if you hear this, thank you, blood. Appreciate that. And I mean that from the bottom of my black heart. You showed that movie uh, Boomerang. And I had a chance to see that scene where uh, Marcus Graham, the character Marcus Graham, bought a collar from somebody, uh, was out there um, calling for some dog that didn't exist. And uh, Layla Rashawn's character came up to him and he met her that way and macked on her. And then later he hit that. The problem was that he saw her bed. And on her bed, she had teddy bears. She a grown woman and she about to catch a dingling with teddy bears on her bed. How is that possible? He can't have toys and comic books at his age. And we say we agree with that. How she gonna have a teddy bear at hers? The fact that you have to do certain things and make certain changes to get the drawers means that they should have to do, do similar things and, and um, meet similar standards to what they've got. So if she gets to keep a teddy bear and what else is about her, what else is there about her that's going to compensate for the fact that you got to be grown, but she gets to act like a goddamn kid by keeping teddy bears. What else is going to compensate? Is her cooking worth it? Is she a hell of a cleaner and that makes it worth it? It's got to be more than just she bends over and makes you bust a hell of a nut. It's got to be more than that. Get it? So... You tell this, that's the fifth thing you tell the young blood. You give him that example, the toys and the comic books on, on, in his possession and the teddy bears in hers. And he going to stand at that point before he hits puberty. Damn. You know what? You might be thinking, yeah, but see, he going to sit up here and have all these, all these high standards and drive these women away. And they just going to go to guys that got the lower standards. That depends on if you can trust him to fuck the shuck up. Because if he tells other dudes about this, he going to spread it. So by the time he and his crew get to middle school, they're going to understand what the game is. By the time they get to high school, they're going to be done spread this to other crews. And what this does is it's going to give these women a wall to hit before they hit the real wall. Because, you know, we always say women don't they don't they only start to really mature mentally after they've hit the wall. We say that. Why can't they act like this before they hit the wall? They can't do it because we haven't made them do it. See, when. We get of age and start noticing them. They become a wall. They agree they're going to play these games and do all this stuff to keep the punani out of reach. I'm not saying they got to fornicate. But anything, any kind of validation for a man, they keep out of reach, right? Okay, well, see, they, they become a wall. 
because we let them be a wall and we aren't a wall for them in exchange. When the dudes are on code about this, we become a wall. They hit that wall, they learn, and then they can act a little better before they hit the real wall. Or they can decide, or if they're too stupid to do it, then they've already eliminated themselves. They can't learn that lesson, great, fine. There are other parts of the world where the women do. You get older, you get the ability to travel, you get to go to these other areas. Now, if the women are really, really recalcitrant about this and they, they've hit a wall and they realize, oh my God, we have to have, we have to meet standards if we're going to have them, they may turn around and try to tell the guys, oh, but see, uh, we're going to spread this feminism to the rest of the world. Now, mind you, in middle school, they ain't thinking that organizingly. High school, they're not either. But if they even try to say, well, we're going to spread this feminism to the Eastern world, we and young bloods all need to be on code to say to these Eastern women, if you take on this feminism, we'll leave your ass too. You will not find us. We won't even come out there to travel to you. If feminism spreads to Colombia, cut Colombia off. Go there for everything else, but don't give the women a chance. If it spreads to Brazil, cut them off and don't give them a chance. Go, go to Bahia to learn about the black history, all that other stuff, but don't give the broads a chance that they come with that feminism stuff. Do not give them a shot. And tell these young bloods, no matter where in the world you go, if the women are on that feminism stuff, not women's rights and, and justice and fairness, and that that's okay, but if they're on that feminism stuff where they get to have standards but you don't, you have to meet standards but they don't, you gotta do all this to get so little in exchange from them, then you cut them off and you go elsewhere. That's all. When that, see the thing is, you gotta be a wall. And for this to be the case, a lot of us might say, well, you know, we need simps because they pay to, they do X, Y. No, we don't need simps actually. We need men to be fair to women. We need men that aren't going to mistreat them and abuse them, but we don't need simps. And we make these guys, we, we need to make these dudes understand, bro, you messing up the game. They don't respect you and they're going to turn around and offer all of us a worse deal because they can get over on you. You got to do this to impress them and they don't have to do nothing to impress you. Are you serious, nigga? You tell these dudes <laughs> and you tell these young cats, tell young blood too. Hey, man, look, it's all right that you got to do some things to impress them. It's OK for them to have standards, but that, that goes both ways. And if you were nigga meeting standards and having none, you were simp. And you're going to mess it up for everybody if that's the case. You're going to mess it up even for the women later on. Nobody will benefit. Make them understand. But tell these young bloods that the mistake that we made was that we were too easy. We were their age and the middle aged niggas told us to make it too easy. That we were supposed to be too easy. And the old niggas back then weren't telling them nothing any different. Now the old niggas is gone. And the middle-aged niggas is the old niggas. And we are the middle-aged guys. And we are telling young bloods. So we're going to get old. And then we're going to get gone. And the thing is that one of, and this is what I love about this religion that I follow. You start teaching chastity to young men. And it actually works to a certain extent. The only thing that can undermine the effects of teaching them chastity is when there are other men that are enough other men out there that are willing to not be chaste. Or enough men out there that are willing to be simps. That's it. You start teaching that to these young dudes, man. You teach them, look, hey, you, you uh, be ready. Don't don't plan your life completely alone and celibate. That's not natural, but be prepared in case it becomes necessary. That's what we have to teach these young guys, actually. And in the Muslim community, they'll do that. They'll say, look, be prepared in case it becomes necessary for a long stretch of time or for whatever reason, say one wife dies and or, uh, or just leaves you, whatever the case. Just be prepared in case and then it cannot be used to control you. You tell these young brothers the same thing. Be prepared to go without it because you can go without. It is possible, especially now with testosterone production being lowered in males. It's possible to go without that punani for a long time and still be happy. Be prepared for it. It becomes possible and then it can't be used to control you. Because the minute that a woman can control you with the punani, she ain't going to give you nothing no more. And that's the, uh, that's the ironic paradox of it all except unless it's absolutely necessary. 
And this is why one of the things we have to be we have to be willing to tell them is the minute your wife tries to use it to control you, you make her know that you're going to get it somewhere else. And if you're Muslim, you're going to get it from another wife. And if she's going to leave, bye, bitch. Uh, and by the way, I'm not going to give you a divorce until I've married another woman and stuck it in her and consummated that marriage. Then you can have your divorce. I'm going to draw it out until that point. You are going to learn. You try to use that to control me. You're going to lose the penis and you're going to share it. You flip the game. But you never, ever teach these men that this is just the way it is and they just got to deal with it. No, no, no. There's always a way to fight back. And let these young bloods know. The first way is to simply not have to fight really at all. You just come in with a very egalitarian measuring stick. I got to meet these standards. You got to meet those standards. So starting from a young age and my toys and my comic books that are in my possession from when I was in elementary school or turn off to you, then bitch, what you doing with that teddy bear on your bed? That's first thing. They will take it from there. That will be the lesson and they will take it from there. So these women start talking about, well, my nigga got to have a car to come pick me up. OK, fair enough. Bitch, you better have a car, too, because what happens when mine breaks down? One hand washes the other. Gender equality, right? Oh, wait a minute. OK, so I got to have a car, but you don't. Well, then what the hell are you going to give me in exchange for me having a car that you ain't got to have? Well, I did my makeup and all this other stuff. Yeah, but if it rains, then what? I got to have a car. You got to help me take care of it then. At least, at the very least, get these oil changes. Something. When this gets into the minds of the young bloods and it spreads, believe you me. Believe you me. When these young bloods get to be our age, it'll be a different dynamic. Either the women cannot learn these young bloods are living without them, living their best lives, and we don't have to talk about this no more, or the women got, they understood what the deal is, and they made appropriate decisions, and these young bloods are living their best lives with somebody either way it goes but we got to start with like making them understand what the deal is with how it's a bad deal right now and how their own mothers sometimes grandmothers aunts and older sisters have have uh, perpetuated this sometimes but yeah we got to take responsibility for one thing and that's being too goddamn easy and put the blame on these old niggas too for telling us back when they were middle aged and we were young bloods age to be too goddamn easy put, put, put that on them you gave bad advice and we didn't think critically and we listened to it and we were stupid enough to not think about it okay now we're gonna tell young blood you don't like that advice shut your old ass up you an old fool i'm telling these young blood something that's completely fair and you take issue with it well that's just the way it is you got to do all this so he got to do all this to get a bitch nigga if you like that deal for you then say that you like that deal for yourself don't tell this young blood that he has to do all of this and pay twice and, and three times the price for half the product, half the results. Don't be doing that. So hope that what I said is a benefit. Hopefully it won't be necessary one day. I'm sorry I couldn't keep this under seven minutes like I intended. But uh, hey, look, uh, thank you for listening, though. Blackheart signing black out. Assalamu alaikum.